that. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we lead such active lives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing on my calendar is maybe a vaccine in, in February sometime. Oh, they just announced that uh, people of 16 to 65 years with uh, comorbid conditions can now be uh, getting a vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Up to the CDC. <laughs> it's only 110 million people, but that's okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I, I, I didn't I know. Heard our, I, think it, I heard it was going to be 65 and over for everyone. Well, first it was going to be 75 and older. Yeah, yeah. but they changed it today. Yeah, they changed it. I saw that. Yeah. So uh, I got my first shot yesterday. They they uh, are doing the Moderna vaccine at our community. Okay. So we have all gotten our first shot shot good, here. Good. So most of us have. My daughter's a nurse at in Ventura, and she just got her second shot on uh, Saturday. That's great. Friday. Yeah. Good. So, yeah. Did it, did you do you know which one you got, Bob? Was it the, the Moderna or? Uh... It's the frozen the one, other one, the only one out now. It's Moderna, it's a Moderna, yeah. Yeah. So I have to come back in a month for the second one. If they have it. Oh, they'll have it. Uh, I th yeah, I think they'll have it. <laughs> yeah. The, Are they the other one's not out now, Jerry? What's that? The other vaccine, uh, who was it that had the other vaccine? That's not, they don't have any more of that? There's two of them. Two other ones, I don't remember the name of them. Okay. Pfizer and Moderna, and yeah. then AstraZeneca. I said AstraZeneca, I was trying to think of. I think the one that's gonna make the difference is gonna be that Johnson & Johnson, because it's a single dose, and I think there's no, at least very little refrigeration restrictions, and that's gonna make quite a difference. Well, it's only, I think it's only the first one the Moderna one that has the extreme refrigeration requirements. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not an expert, so don't rely on my. Hey, you know, I, I'm just going the Clorox and bright light route, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how'd that work out? <laughs> yeah, I feel fit as a fiddle. <laughs> You, you, wherever you go, you light up the room, huh? Right. <laughs> okay, I think we can get started with someone starting. Uh, let's see, who should we start? We got Jerry with his let, how to do uh, shoot astrophotography from space. And we got Tim wants, would want to show his ronky stuff. Um, Bob G, Bob Grunberg, Grunberg has got some astrophotography. Hank's got some astrophotography and talk about a barn door as well. So what do you, what do you think? Well, let's talk about the the latest, most current thing. Okay, let's see. That'd be probably Tim's uh, Ronky. What do you yeah. think? Sure, that that'd be good. Do you have do you have the images of that? Uh, yeah, I do. I Let me you? see if I I'll I'll get the screen up here and see if I can share that. Yeah, there's there's one. The very last one I sent you was a Word uh, document, and it had a before and after inside R, and it's 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 not bad. That's that's not the one. That's that's from the, last. Last time. This is last week, right? Right. Yeah, that's the one we decided you're undercorrected. Right. There's there's where I am now. And have uh, you worked on it? Have you worked on it since last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I work on that today. And for a very short time, Mike Chibnick was telling me just really slow it down now. And and so that's what I did. Yeah. The outside of our images that I had, uh, the second line out. Um, I kept fiddling with these to, to try to get it to look like the wonky, wonky gram that I got from Mel Bartel's website. Uh -huh. And the second line out outside R, you can't really see it here, but there was just a hint. If you look up above, there was a hint. And this, this may be the one that maybe it was something I didn't see, but there was a hint that made me think up, oh, I'm turning an edge again, but I, I'm looking at, at, uh, subsequent uh, images i th i don't i think i'm okay on that yeah, i think the correction <laughs> the, the, it's, burned, it's very little i wouldn't worry about it no i'm not going to worry and and this and the the uh yeah the this image here 
it's I don't know whether this was the first time around the barrel or the second time around the barrel, but it is definitely showing, um, it, you know, outside R, it's showing more correction now than it was. It yeah. was really, after, when I looked at it before, it looked almost like just spherical. Yeah. And in, in here, I think the middle, uh, you know, 40, the 40 zone on in, it's pretty spherical. But the, but the correction, it's starting to happen. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty your, pleased. Your edge on that other one, your edge is fine. You don't have any turn down edge. Yeah, here's a, this is a pretty good image here. This is one of the images I thought was really representative of what I have and also um, the, uh, the correct ronchigram that I, I think I gave Tom from last week. When you kind of look at one and then look at the, the ronchigram, you know, it needs a little bit more correction, but it's getting closer. It's getting yeah. to the point where I may have to start doing a little knife edge, start getting used to the, the knife edge again. But that that takes quite a bit of doing. Um, yeah, if I were you, I would rely on uh, actually digital data from here on in. Oh, oh okay, okay. So, I'll get that all set up. Uh, I have, I have the the tester. I have Jerry. I have it set up with two different light sources. One, uh, I can literally tape over one and use the other. So I have a a slit on a lower light source that is below the window. And for some reason, when I used that before, years ago, with the 10 inch, uh, that little slit uh, that, that's below the, the, the viewing window, it worked with the knife edge really well. It, it's, it was able to see those little subtleties a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And when I used the knife edge with the upper window with that really bright uh, uh, LED, it just doesn't want it. You just can't pick it out. And until I get that tester with Tom and we get a chance to really take a look at that in the workshop live, it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can to, to take some images of it, but I think it's coming along pretty good. I really do. Um, uh, the other, the other thing I had to offer uh, was that I looked up and I kind of wish Mike was here. I was, I looked up an article by the people that make this 3d, um, stage for the bath interferometer and they have a, a, a resource page of where you're going to get these uh, the uh, the red leds and um the beam splitters the flat mirror you know the the, uh, the single surf the front surface mirror and then the diverging lens i remember talking to you people about what well what kind of lens am i going to be using here is it going to be uh, uh you know double concave or is it going to be convex and he cleared that all up. It's supposed to be a BCX or in other words, a biconvex uh, mirror and rather small. So all these parts can really be gotten from the surplus shed and another one called the surplus uh, optical, uh, surplus optics. And so you can find it on one or the other. And if you can't find them there, you can go to Thor Labs and, and look for a few, uh, a few things there. One of the problems I had was looking at these red lasers that this guy used. He was using the uh, a five volt, uh, five milliwatt uh, red laser from a company named AliExpress. I'm sure it's Chinese. And I'm not kidding you. They, they come in a lot of 10 for like a dollar 60. <laughs> and he said, get, get at least 30 of them. You know, so there would be like about three or four bucks you know, for 30 of these LEDs. And he said, yeah, out of those, maybe maybe one or two are clean and then and, and it's, a, it's a good LED. But being Chinese, you know, the delivery of these things, it's at least 60 days to get here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I started looking at um, places like Thor Labs, <clears throat> and, which had a pretty good LED, but it was like 13 bucks. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, uh, with those, with those resources, this surplus shed, and the other one was, was this uh, uh, surplus optics, and then Thor Labs. Between those three, I think you can really come up with some really good, uh, some really good uh, uh, resources for this this bath interferometer. And I think in in particular, there's a there's a website out there. I think it's called G5. It, you, when you when you when you look at the G G5 optics, I'm not sure what it was. I don't have it written down here, but they, but I got most of the um, 
you know, most of, of the resource pages where I could go and look were from that page. And those are the people that make the, 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 the uh, three axis stage or they have a printed plastic. And next, week have, next week you'll have prices for us, right? Yeah, the, the, I, I have prices now. Oh. But, the, but the, you know, for, you know, for the, the, the beam splitter, Mike gave me a 10 millimeter beam splitter uh, for the, you know, for the, this five, this G5 page, the, the guy that was, has all these directions on how to build these things. The beam splitter he suggests to use is, is a 15 millimeter. And, it, and that's about $21. So uh, the and the red lasers, those things, like I said, you can get lots of ten for a dollar, something. Mm -hmm. The uh, mm -hmm. you know the, the the little aluminized mirror, the front sink, the front surface or the, the uh, um, mirror, that's a little bit more uh, tricky, Jerry, because. Uh, they they say to get something between 10 to 15 millimeters in diameter. And when I looked those up, uh, the one that I found from Sur Surplus Optics was looked like it was just ideal. It was 16 by 10 millimeters, but it was a dielectric coating. And the guy said, don't get the dielectric coating. Now, I, I, I'd like to know why. That, that'd be a great coating. So that, that thing's about 11 bucks. But I found another mirror uh that i think is that that surplus optics for like five bucks so that's not bad and mm -hmm. and, and and then again uh the diverging lens that's another thing that i may end up having to spend a few bucks on i did find one from the surplus optics that was not a um it wasn't a double convex it was something called uh dcx and the guy said that it's not a true biconvex lens, but the optics of it are really good. They're really accurate. And it's only $4.50. So when you added all this stuff up, I mean, it was well under $50. And I think for another 15, you can get this three axis uh, stage. So it's not too bad. Sounds like everything is within the affordable range. It does. It does. And then and from there, uh, it actually got into the camera where where some websites were talking about using a uh, a, a webcam, and I thought that that's that's a whole nother expense. I don't know if I want to do that. Well, then I kept on looking at other pages where the people were actually using you know the iPhones as, as for the for the uh, imaging, and then yet another would just use a DCL a DSLR. So you can get away with using DLSR, DSLRs, but what's that, Jerry? Oh, I said whatever you've got for a camera, that will work. Yeah, I think the so. The trick is just to mount so. it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's going to be, and Tom, by the way, Tom, that, that image you sent me of that three-stage um, uh, from, from last week, and you left a link. I saved that link and looked it up, and it just went to nowhere. It was a 404. So, oh, I, I think I, I, I doubled don't know that where link. Where that was? I, I, I think that link got doubled up, so you have to kind of cut it in half. I tried to put it down a, a second time. Oh, it should, should, it should work. Oh, okay. And if you go to our past okay. meetings, on, okay, I'll on, look at that because I have that link. Yeah. yeah, take a look at it closely. It got it got got uh, duplicated. So anyway. Right So anyway, that you know, for me, that's that's I got I got a lot more information groundwork going here for that bath interferometer, and of course the free the uh, there's freeware for the for the software for it, and that's going to be also easier to use. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to be I'm going to probably next meeting I'm going to be asking you guys for a little bit of help with uh, in starting with uh, imaging with a, um, a a very simple CMOS camera, and and you know they. Bob, I know Bob has. I think what what's, he he uses uh, he uses one. They're not too they're not too much. I mean, some of them are like one hundred forty nine bucks. And so uh, I'll I'll get a list of those and maybe I can run them by you guys because you're the experts on this. I have no idea what I'm doing with it. You'll and, figure it out. You'll all figure it out. Yeah, 
I just I was going to bet my bottom dollar that, that Jerry was going to just say, Tim, just use your DSLR for the time being and experiment. And, you know, I may find I don't like doing it, but you know, I really enjoy watching you guys and all the results you have. So it, it, when I listen, I, I always learn something. So that's it for me, guys. I mean, I'm just going to sit back and listen to you go on the astrophotography tonight. It's, it's always good. But I'd like to make a comment to you, uh, Tim. Um, I, I'm having trouble with my internet, uh, so I may freeze up. It's really a problem here. But, um, you know, I used uh, DSLR for years. And, okay. and uh, so uh, then I've since gone to ATEC cameras and using their their uh, it's their video cameras and uh, so it's a different experience but the uh, ZWO um, am I frozen up okay no you're good no you're fine now you're frozen yeah the ZWO that's one that I was looking at yeah no that 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 is fantastic camera and uh, paired with um, uh, if, if you work it with um, Registax 6, the, all, of, all of my planetary stuff is now done with that. And that picture that I took of the conjunctions of using a ZWO. And that is a fabulous combination. I mean, you can get um, incredible detail with that. Very, very that's easy. A video, that's a video camera. Do you have the, the number on that so I can look it up? Uh, yeah, I can I can give that to you if you can uh, hang on a minute. Uh, sure. Proceed with something. So, um, do you, uh, you want to do uh, astrophotography of planets or 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 oh, deep, uh, yeah. deep sky of yeah, objects? Yeah, because there's a big difference wanted, between those, right? I wanted to do um, I wanted to do I, I have a PST, so I ran across a camera that was really specifically really good for a PSD for the, the personal solar scope and I want to do lunar and solar oh. and I want to start with that and then phase into planets but really lunar and solar to begin with because it's so simple and then, and then lunar, probably lunar is simple lunar is simple but solar is not so simple I think I mean for okay. solar you need uh, filters and so on and, and also yeah, yeah. I think the people who do that they also use uh, video to sharpen the image so it's the oh. that, that's a separate special art, I think. It's the same thing with the moon. It's a bunch of they use a video camera to capture a lot of um, images and then look through them for the best ones and stack those. Same deal with the sun. Yeah, just I, I think I I think I'll get a I'll get a list of some of the names. There's another one. I think it was QHY had a couple of cameras that, mm. that I thought were pretty good. But so when that's they, the Chinese camera company that uh, Paul Wynn used to like a lot. Yeah, they had they had they one that would. Yeah, there's the there's the, the. And some of these are really they're really inexpensive. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah. So, so think, but, but uh, for 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 the moon, actually, you probably don't want any of these cameras because the field of view is going to be way too small, uh, oh. and you you should use a DSLR for that. Okay. Okay. Well, it depends on how much resolution you want. The ZW, uh, I use a ZW 290 MC, and I use it on the planets and the moon. And it's true, uh, you can't get wild, wide field of view with that on the moon, but boy, can you ever get some fantastic close ups yeah. if you want to do detail. I'll try to uh, pull you, my pictures what do you up. You get a wide use. field of view with any of these cameras is going to depend on the focal length of your telescope. Okay. Some of them uh, fine. Well, well, with that, Jerry, I can use the the uh, the TV one hundred and one, which is five five hundred and forty millimeters. Uh, so that's pretty wide. Yeah, that's a very wide uh, f five telescope. Yeah. And if you want to do it simple, you know, if you have a DSLR that can uh, run it, uh, I mean, if you want to take a video to make things better, a DSLR is pretty simple because it has everything uh, internally. You can just press the button it's got memory and so on and you can set the resolution and the frequency very simple cameras can do that but if you start with the zwo camera then you need a computer to stream the video uh and, and record it so it becomes a whole lot more 
uh, difficult. I mean, there's a threshold to getting started with that. It's not yeah, as simple yeah, as just... Yeah. just yeah. Well, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Mike. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good info, and I think and I think where I'm going to start um, is with the DSLR, and I'll, I'll start with that. I do have an old laptop, but but I just have a feeling it's still using XP. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream through that or not, and I don't think it'll support anything like Windows Seven or anything. It's 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 an old old heavy laptop, so. Yeah, DSLR is probably way to go. Let me try to share this photo of Clavius that I use the ZW camera. Um, oh. Oh, wow. You? I'm screen sharing. Yeah, this is a, a, a failure. Uh, the other night I went out, um, two nights ago, it was actually very nice, um, and uh, took this image of the horse head. Uh, it was uh, 95 exposures, and each of them is 60 seconds long. I used 20 flats on a Fuji 6400 ISO, a modified Fuji camera, um, with a G11. And uh, yeah, so uh, I processed it with GIMP. Uh, but what, what I you see GIMP's these nice. horrible, I like GIMP. You, yeah, you see these horrible. Uh, Gradients, right? So on the upper left, there's this this thing coming in over there, and and then off to the right, there's all the way by the sides. I know that there to the side there is a gap that's that happened because midway I stopped the camera and I started messing with the mount and it jumped. So the, part of the that gap is is explained by that, but then there's still more. So I don't know what this is. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, so well, you what, know what? What kind of I telescope was it? Sorry. What kind of telescope is it? Uh, the Magnute, uh, 152 millimeter Magnute F 4.8. Huh. That's pretty. So that's, uh, a, that's a Canada telescope, right? So, yeah. The, the, the nice thing about the uh, Magnute is that it is a very flat field. So you yeah. don't need a, a, a coma corrector or anything like that. And it's also a, a very uh, uh, high uh, F ratio. So, I mean, but there's no. Um, to fast there's, scope. There's no spider holding a secondary. That's right. Yes, That's and intended to be in there. The so, one spike that you see here, that you see this uh, spike yeah. here, the single spike. I think it's because of the focuser is protruding in the um, in the tube. Good. And that's the only asymmetric, you know, that, that, that would probably lead to that spike, I suspect. So it's oriented with the focuser, then that's how you can tell if that's the case. Yeah. The so other little faint lines around there are probably, and my guess is that that's um, dust particles on your lens. Okay. Could be. Could or, be. or on the mirror. Yeah. Now, of course, Alnitak is a horrible star. I mean, it's, that's not a normal star. And, and normally you don't notice it that much. Uh, you uh -huh. can look at the other stars, and that's all tolerable. But uh, you know, Alnitak is always a problem for this target. You know, as as just What's kind the, of a as a simple as a simple minded guy, Hank, I kind of like this image. I kind of <laughs> like it. And, you know, if you if you that's got rid of that start. little that deal over on the right side of the image, if you got rid of that, I think it's fabulous. Well, what's I, I know, this white streak up there in the upper left corner? So, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's kind of cool. Looks I, like was a wondering is. I, I was wondering if it was the LED lights from across the street because they put in these new, new LED lights. But oh, I checked; yeah. it doesn't reach my scope. I think this this bundle of light is pointing straight at Alnilam. I just followed it on the Stellarium, and it's really pointing at Alnilam. So, oh, so I wonder if the flare from an out of field star. Yeah, okay. I, I wonder if it somehow reflects on the sensor by 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 not framing it quite right or something like that. I don't know. And this Probably is a modified it's, camera. It's bouncing so, off the inside of some tube somewhere on the way to the, uh, to the camera. Yeah, but I've never seen this before. I mean, I've used this camera a lot for imaging, and this is the first time that I see these horrible uh, uh -huh. gradients. But I like that, I mean, uh, if, you, if, if, you, if you forget about the gradients, it's actually not bad for, you know, for a simple DSLR. You can get this thing for 125 bucks on eBay, uh, secondhand or something, you know. Wow. Uh, the Fuji well, actually one it has a very good sensitive sensor and it compares very well with us. What's the length the of the exposures? Uh, 60 it's seconds each at 6400 ISO. Hank, that's a Fuji. What is it? Fuji? XA1. I, 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 think, I think this image is fabulous. I, I really like it. 
<laughs> what did you, yeah. you stack them with? Uh, we have his DSS. Oh, okay. And I've processed it in DSS one time and then in GIMP, and GIMP looked a little better, so I went with this one. I didn't I didn't go overboard with, with uh, processing because what you can do is you can rest and run a, uh, <laughs> there's a program, uh, what is the name again? There's a program that removes the star from the image before you start processing. So then you can take the stars out and then uh, treat them separately and overlay them and put them back in. And then the stars are much less pronounced and messy. Um, if, if it was a good image, I, I would have tried that, but I didn't. But other than that, the tracking was fine. Um, uh, so for, for one minute tracking, if you zoom in, I can, let me just zoom in. You see that the stars are slightly oblong, but it's okay. So my polar alignment was pretty good. The horse head is fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, but I would have liked to have I like, like, to, I like the flares and all that stuff. I think it's neat. Did you modify the uh, camera? Or is this just the sensitivity of the H alpha? Uh, the first one I had modified by LifePixel, and the second one I modified myself. So I have two Fuji XA1s actually. So the one the one by um, LifePixel actually has um, a filter on it. So um, what they do is they take the infrared filter out and they put another one back in that that blocks the uh, uh, long wave uh, infrared, but that lets through the, you know, so they put an H alpha filter on. So the H alpha line is very strong there still. Um, uh, and one that I modified myself does not have that. So it would work with a reflector, but not with a refractor because then it would be all blurry. So, what, Hank, which uh, mount did you use? The G11S, the Los Mandy. Thank you. What does that stand for? Uh, I don't know what it means, but it's, it might be simple because the, the regular G11 comes with the Gemini and that's a fairly expensive um, uh, controller system. And I didn't want to pay that money. I, I thought $2,495 is enough for a mount. And oh, okay, you, so you got, it's got it, the old 494 controller yes, stepper. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So I have that. And then later on, I, re I realized that I did need something. So I built my own on-step controller right. with stepper mm -hmm. motors and all that stuff um, that I presented here one time. And that works fairly well. So this is one taken with the on-step controller, controlled by Ecos from the Raspberry Pi and um, Fantastic. You know, operated from my Galaxy tab. So it, it all works out nicely. Not, not to change the subject, how's my audio coming through? Is um, it muffled or? No, oh, you're good. OK. One of, the, one of the clearest transmissions I've heard from you. OK, you, you want to know why? Sure. This is this is really strange. I um I'll, I'll let you finish and I'll show you what I did this week. Okay, go ahead. Thank yeah, well, I, I'm done with this image. I did okay. nothing else to add. I'm, I just need to do it again and see if I can figure out what's going on with these gradients. I'll figure Man, it out. I like this one, Hank. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me let me go switch to the other camera. Okay, so this is my original. Uh, on my, my laptop. And what I did was uh, I've got uh, a, a $20 wise camera where you can upload a firmware into it uh, and turn it into a webcam. <laughs> so what about your, what about your uh, microphone? It's in, it's in the, I think it's in the, the, the wise. Um, let me, yeah, I believe so. Yes, you you're sounding very good. Again. Mike, could uh, you hold that up again? Okay. And people, so you can go to speaker view. I am, but you started talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the WISE camera. Um, it's uh, basically uh, a, a a webcam on uh, steroid. Well, no, it's not really. It's it's made to be a surveillance thing, and this is the um, camera that I use to go and take pictures of uh, some uh, birds nesting outside. Uh, it's uh, for for a, not a lot of money. 
it, it's very sophisticated. There's a, a memory slot in the bottom that you can put a, a memory card. And what it does is it uh, takes 15 second uh, uh, videos um, that uh, are stored on here, but more importantly, it's Wi-Fi enabled. So um, they have a free service that'll hold up to a certain, uh, uh, I think it's 15 days or 20 days worth of videos. But I think it's it's super inexpensive to hold your videos for the entire year. So it's it sees at night, they got a new version, which has even better dark, uh, dark uh, nighttime vision. This has got like a F2.8 lens and uh, the new one has like an F1.6 lens. And there's lots of videos showing how to hack this. Now. Um, and so what I'm thinking about doing is that the, the package you normally get is for, with two cameras. And uh, uh, I'm thinking about converting one into a um, planetary camera because it uses a little screw-in lens. Okay. The, the nice one. So you can get adapters and... Basically, you can take this whole thing apart and take out the guts if you really wanted to. But um, you could, right here, the lens comes right out, and um, you can screw an adapter in there. So um, at, at the very least, what I'm going to do is, because it's Wi-Fi, I'm planning on putting it on top of my telescope and... Um, and hook up my motor to my um, my hook it up to my telescope and then monitor where the slit is in my observatory, and and move the uh, the dome around in case it uh, the 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 uh, in in case in case it gets in the way of the telescope because I've got side by side. I, I don't know if I can really rely on the model to, you know, stay away from both of them. So are we Mike, Mike is, is your camera now? Part, part are of? we looking through that camera now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, as opposed to this is off. Yeah. This is off. Yeah, you can see how much how much better it is. Yeah, that's a better, <laughs> better much better. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean for twenty Twenty dollars, yeah, and uh, and the um, sounds better. Well, thank you. <laughs> and and the, the the good thing is is that you can replace the lens. Um, I got a like a bag of these lenses through eBay for this style camera, and so I've got it from very narrow to very wide, and uh, so uh, you know for twenty bucks it's. <laughs> You know, they're they're at the at the Do It Center at the uh, you know Home Depot. It uh, I, I think it's a it's a good buy, but they have a new one um, where it's an it's specifically made for outside with the battery. It's designed to go for six months, um, and uh, um, this requires. Um, when when you use it as a normal camera, it's it's um, it's like your normal USB C of that uh, to 110 volts. But the other one can has got its own batteries, and they they did some special stuff, and uh, um, and also it's got people detection too. You know, it's just not a camera. It's it'll track people. It'll uh, I think that there's software hooks to. For, for visual recognition of certain people and stuff like that, which I don't use. All I bought this for because my we had a couple of blue jays in a in a uh, uh, in a bush, and my wife wanted to be able to monitor them. And so, with this, all she had to do is pick up her iPhone and go on the Wise app and go, "Oh, there they are!" <laughs> and you know, it was a it was a really good the deal it's uh it's a lot less money than a lot of the other cameras and if you go to the wise website 
they've got other things. They've got the locks and what's the name? Why Weiss? W Y Z E. Oh, okay. Okay. This is the first camera, I believe, that they came out. Um, or the second. And they've got a, a three, which is a little bit different. The three actually is IPC water resistant. So in, in this case, we were worried about whether it was going to rain or not and call up the electronics. Um, they, the um, outdoor, yeah, right, yeah. The, um, so it's, I think it's just a really great little company. It's little, it's the little engine that could, and you know, 25 bucks. Okay, so they, it went up a little bit. Okay, no big deal. So, um, but they've got uh, um, on the back of this one, not on the newer ones, there's a, a thing oh. that hooks up other cameras. It's like a hub, uh, but now they have a separate hub. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But there's what, a lot. What's a two way mic? What? What? Uh, that, that one camera said that it had a two way mic. Does yours have that too? And what is that yeah. two way mic? It's got a speaker in the back. Okay. And the, in the two, it's the really oh, okay. tinny okay. speaker. Okay. So this, in uh -huh. effect, could be used like a, a ring in a way, but um, the three has a much better one. They even have one, if you go back up, they have one that um, automatically uh, pans and tilts to keep person in, uh, they don't, oh, there it is right there. Go down a little bit right there. Uh, yeah, the $50 one, that's pan and tilt. Mm. It'll follow you. So, <laughs> you know, for that amount of money, you know, you're trying, you're tr you know, um, what they, they did this at the very beginning of COVID because people couldn't get webcams and they had all these, you know, and people were scalping people on Amazon for, you know, a, a $15 webcam, you know, for a hundred bucks, that type of thing. And they said, well, hey, let's, let's be nice to people. So um, um, basically it takes a... Uh, um, Takes one of these little tiny. Uh, Maybe you could hook up that tracking feature to track the object you're trying to take a picture of. Well, on that one, I'm not sure how that that would work. Yeah. It might be um, the, the the secret the security features and all that other stuff are not enabled that when it's a webcam. So when I want to use this as a security camera i have to reflash it with the original firmware but hey it's not a big deal so uh well good i i think for getting i'm, I'm gonna try um i think for getting into planetary stuff this might be the way to go 20 bucks um i just haven't had a chance because the weather sucks here it's 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 been cloudy all the time. So Hank, you're you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had a few very good nights, uh, but uh, yeah, last night wasn't all that great. Yeah, yeah. Most of most of the time, right now it's it's really cloudy. But most of the time, we've had this like a thin gauze, and. Uh, uh, you, you think it's a clear night until your eyes get dark adapted and you see this buttermilk effect on the sky. It's like a gauze. And most of the time, I haven't been able to uh, okay. see well, Robert, the Polaris. Did you have something, Robert, you wanted to share? Are you speaking with me? Yeah, Robert. Richard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, um, well, f first of all, this is the uh, camera I've got. That's cost about thirty bucks. It's it's what I'm out of focus. Back it up. Um. Oh, oh, Lucci. Yeah, uh, it's about thirty bucks. I got it off of Amazon. That's the camera I'm using right now, and it's got a, a lens that can focus, and uh, it really is. Uh, it's really neat. It's just totally cleaned up. 
Oops, we lost Bob. Oops. What? Yeah. Oh, you froze. I froze. Okay. Anyway, it I use it sits right on top of my monitor. Yeah. And uh, that's what I use. The other thing I just wanted to uh, see if I can share this with you guys. Um, okay. Oh wow! This is this is taken with the uh, good shot, Bob or Robert. This was taken with the uh, ZWL oh, that's Clavius. of Clavius and with uh, uh, my C11 Edge at F10. And um, so I just wanted to show you what that camera can do. And uh, it's under decent condition. Th this, is, this was taken on average, average scene here. And uh, so I Boy, use, that is, that's fabulous. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, with the camera, I use a sharp cap um, with a ZWO, and so it's a program that uh, downloads the images. This is composed, uh, I had originally 400 images and cut it down to 300 and then stacked 300 images uh, using um, the uh, Registax. Uh, six and it is so once you get used to this you can get these images quickly you can process them quickly and they show up like this mm -hmm. it uh, yeah it's it's pretty amazing and i was using a dslr for nope we lost you bob you froze again come okay, back it wasn't me for a change <laughs> so, someone's downloading a Netflix movie. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, you know, I've got a, a C11. It seems to be a pretty good size as far as, you know, planetary stuff. Um, uh, my Mars images were pretty good. Uh, I you're guess back. the only way. Yeah. Bob, you're back. Tim's got his <laughs> Sergeant Garcia. Oh, did I have did I have uh, Sergeant Garcia up there? Yeah. Oh, oh, we lost <laughs> we lost Bob Richard again. No, Bob's up there. I see him. Well, now he's not moving. Oh. Yeah, I had to text my son back. So that's why I left. <laughs> I'll share some more of these photos uh, at another time uh, with you guys. I'm going to try to set them. Yeah, we're it keeps, keeps freezing up. So, but anyway, I just wanted to show that to show you what it'll do. Yeah. It's fabulous. Very nice. And that that's that Zwo 290 MC, right? Yep. Yeah, that I'm gonna look that one up. It. That that that's slick. I yeah, no, I highly recommend it. And use Sharp Cap. Use the program called Sharp Cap with it. And I think Hank's mentioned Sharp Cap before. Yeah, and then combine that with Registax. And uh, so I've got this is a uh, 300 stacked images, and then I use the sharpening program in Registax to really bring out the detail. Yeah, Registack has a great sharpening program in it. Hey Bob, uh, what type of gain do you use with uh, the 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 two ninety on red on sharp stack on sharp cap? Well, it all of course depends on the uh, how bright the object is. I use this uh, only with uh, um, planetary and lunar, and so I just move the gain around. I play with exposures and gain until I get what seems to me to be an optimal image. Yeah, so you have to do that. Play around with it. And I do a lot of that kind of hands-on trial and error until I get an image that looks really good. And then I know mm -hmm. once I start recording it, uh, then I... Ooh. Yeah. 
at low network bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the, I've had IT people up here and nobody can quite figure out why I'm having a problem. But it works better in another part of the of our place here. So I'll go there another time. I'm not going to do this. This is so frustrating. So anyway, to answer your question, yeah, I I just work with it and then and then I have I, I have these trains of video that the camera records. And before I go into Registax. I go through and examine each of the trained uh, the videos, and I select the video that is the clearest, consistently clearest through the whole video, and then I use those images in Registack. Do you use Aster Stackert at all? And he's gone, folks. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> do, do you use that? Do, do you use um, Aster Stackard? Auto Stackard, I think it is. Auto Stackard, yeah. Uh, that that is yeah that is another alternative. I don't use Auto Stackard, but that's that's similar to uh, Registax. Yeah, yeah. Some people yeah. Use that and really like it a lot. I don't I don't use that so. I have a, 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 a ZWO-178 um, Woodland Hills camera. I, I was going to go buy a new camera, and uh, uh, Dr. D says, well, I have this 178 that's used. You can have it, and it was about 60% um, of the, the list price, and I said, sure, I'll try it. And uh, it's got smaller pixels, so I think you have to be careful with these smaller pixel cameras because the full well capacity isn't as much. And so your, your tendency to, to saturate um, is, is more of a problem. And um, also the noisier for the higher gain, you know, for example, I was uh, trying to uh, do image like Neptune and Saturn and in those cases, the, those planets are much fainter. And so trying to get something decent, you wind up moving the gain up and all of a sudden you're seeing a lot of noise. So um, with all these, in, including Mars, I, I wound up taking multiple runs with different gains and different um, exposures, trying to keep the keep it in the sweet spot to get the best contrast and uh, saturation. And yeah. so yours might be a little bit better in regards to planets, just because I believe the pixels are, are bigger than mine. Mine are like two, a little over two, two microns, which is pretty doggone small. However, um, because they're small pixels and because it's um, not cooled, should preclude you from doing um, uh, deep sky stuff. I've had some pretty good results, like imaging the, the ring nebula at, at F10 um, and um, some other relatively bright deep sky objects. So um, uh, it's just what you're going to have to do is take a lot more images um, there's a, there's a website, uh, the guy's name is Samir. And uh, if, you, if, if he's a big advocate of short, many and short exposures to overcome light pollution. Uh, and so um, he, he, um, his work mainly was with uh, DLSRs, but he also went into CMOS cameras too. So. I, you know, try it. You, you, you might be pleasantly surprised um, with it because yeah. these cameras are very low noise. The lower the noise, the shorter exposures you can do and get uh, a reasonable picture. Yeah, I have not, I have not used a ZWO for deep sky stuff um, because I'm using um, two different a ATEC cameras for that yeah. right now. I used to use DSLRs, 
but uh, I've gone to this uh, using their infinity stacking in in camera stacking or on computer stacking. Yeah. And what I should do is um, just at some place later I'm, I can just show you a number of different shots, deep sky and planetary stuff, both. Mm -hmm. that I had. And a lot of this is on my website. So, you know, if you want to go look. You yeah. See. Um, so, the, the, so we got three, the, we have three more subjects this evening that we can get to. Jerry what, was going to do an update of the finish his topic about space, uh, astro astrophotography from space. And Hank had a little artificial star update. And Bob G has, uh, Gurenberg has some uh, an astro pictures to share. So we got three more things to go in the next 40 minutes. We don't have to cover mine. Mine's just a backup thing. Uh, general discussion, there's no time limit or time urgency to it. Whenever we have nothing to talk about, I can do that. Okay, good. Let's, let's do Bob's. Oh, good. <laughs> let's do Bob's stuff. So, Bob Grunberg, you want to show yeah. your images? Okay, so let's we want to do the most current things. See if I can get this to come up. Yeah, here we go. So, Bob, I was going to ask you, you have a ZWO camera, don't you? I do. In fact, that's what I'm going to talk about now. The um, ASI 224MC. Yeah, it's a sharp cap. Yeah. Use sharp cap too. Yeah. So I, I had this hooked up to sharp cap last night. And mm -hmm. so actually, I'm going to do two things. So the, what you can do with this is you, I, I was trying for the first time to do this. Um, so you do this live stack. So there's the live stack. And, and this is a case where it won't save the images. And then it just, you know, you just play with the, the well, they're covered up here, but you know, you can do the uh, time exposure and the gain. So this one, I, I, I set this, I was, I was up, up and going to sleep. I had this thing running and then I was asleep. I get up a couple hours later and check on it and everything. So I shot, this is 131 images of Orion. And then what this is going to do now, you can do this thing where you go browse and you give it, you give it a folder with a bunch of images. So these are a bunch of PNG images. And then you click this and it, it will start doing the live. This is sort of a simulated live stack. So I, I click this and play. And then it just, it's starting to stack the images one by one and get progressively better and eliminate noise. And you can see over here, the frame stack, some that are ignored. Here's the histogram, which you can play with after the fact. And you can also add uh, darks and flats over here, which I didn't do with this. But so let's see, it's some of these, it's ignoring if, if the stars aren't quite, I found out if they're not, um, you know, point, point sources enough and, and there's some settings for that, it'll ignore those. So this ignored a bunch of them this time, I'm not sure. So that's all of them and it came up with um, kind of a nice, nice image you know, for Ryan Nebula. And then, uh, then what you can do is you can play with this is little zapper here, and you know, just automatically um, changes the uh, histogram here. And this one over here on this side is basically just to zoom in on this portion of the histogram, and you can do the same thing here, and you know, play around with these of you know what you what you want to do with it. And um, looks like you have color channels too, right? Yeah, this is a color camera. It's it's doing RGB on this. No, one. I mean you have color channels right after the histogram there. Is that what those? Oh yeah, are? yeah, yeah. You can play with these individually. Yeah. So like you know, you want more red? <laughs> you know, you can. Yeah. You can play with those however you want. Um, yeah, this is a, a pretty nice tool, you know, to do this. And then I I use under this I do this polar line, which I'll show you some shots after I I finish this. Let me. Um, let me switch to a different share. I'm gonna go share screen again. And, and that's sharp cap. Is that what that? that yeah, that's is? sharp cap and uh, sharp cap pro. And uh, let's see. So I, I did this other. This is from the previous previous nights, and I just this I think I did an auto stacker, but I was it just did some strange things. So, but th these are actually not with the. Uh, the ZWO camera. These are with a DSLR, and I got. You can see, I get this problem with the um, star. You know, with like a, a coma. You know, or I need a field flattener. I guess I was. Yeah, those are definitely coma. 
Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have a recommendation for a reasonably priced one of those that I, I, I thought it might get. What, what get. kind of scope have you got? Um, the scope I have is the, um, the eight inch Newtonian Celestron, the C8 N. What's its uh, focal ratio? F5. Okay, you, you would, I would suggest you get the Teleview one. Okay. Tele Coma corrector. Is that expensive? Probably, but it's the best one. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it is, Bob. Is that the Paracore? Uh, yeah, I think. I think Paracore is a Paracore is a replacement for the. Um, yeah, that's right. It is the Paracore. I, yeah, I have they're, that they're, one. It costs five hundred, five hundred over five hundred dollars. So. That's yeah. But which one do you have? There's a whole bunch of them, and the one he needs for F5 is the cheapest one. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I have the Paracore two, and it's a two yeah, inch. He needs Paracore one. Paracore two is made for really fast systems like F3. Right. So I didn't know there were two of them. Can I get away with the Paracore one for my F3.9? Uh, I don't think so. You'll get improvement, but you won't get the coma gone. Yeah. So here's a Pix Insight with a processed image. And again, you could get a degree in figuring out what all these functions do. But um, you know, there's there's some basic ones that do a, uh, a white balance thing, and and you can you can apply some of these things, and then if you don't like them, you know, undo them, and with all these functions, there's this one called HDR multi scale transform, that's uh, pretty cool. Like this one's already been applied here. Um, the reason that this isn't all blown out is because of this function. It it um, it just balances a lot of things here that you know where you wouldn't be able to see stars because some some portion of the image is just blown out too light and uh so anyway it's kind of so, so bob um let yeah. me ask you about this um so that hdr function that means yeah. uh, usually an hdr with cameras is that you take uh, images of different exposure and you combine them so you don't blow this up but it's just based on a single image and so it it, it just reduces the light and then uses the good parts of that adds more, you know, brightens it and uses it. How, how does it work? Does it based on a single image? Yeah, it's based on a single image, although yes and no. I mean, what, here, let me, uh, let me do this. What, cool. they're, they're, people use this in different ways. And one way you can use it is you go over and you extract the luminance. So you click on that guy, and now you have luminance. And then here, I'm gonna close this out. And then you can take this luminance and uh, apply it to your main image here and it's it's created a mask. So with this one, even though you're using one image, everything that's red is not gonna be processed. So you can just have it process only in here. And then even with a mask, you don't, you don't have to show the mask while you're looking at it. Or if you want the reverse, you can go, here's the mask and I wanna invert the mask. So, so you go, I want to work on the, the nebula or whatever. And you go, no, I want to work on the background, you know, more on the background. So, um, and then there, there are a bunch of other ways to do masks and things. I'm just, I'm just learning this myself. So, you know, I'm playing around with it. But yeah, I'm, <coughs> I'm not sure with the HDR multi-scale transform. I haven't seen anybody do it with more than one image, but um, maybe there is a way to do that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it in the, in this dialogue here for it, but, um, there, this thing about layers of how it does. So I'll just play around with this a little bit, like doing this earlier. And then this is the apply button. So you apply this thing and it, it runs the process. So there, it just did a, a bunch more to it and you go, ah, I don't, the nice thing about this, you go, no, I don't like that. You can just go, go back, you know, go forward and back on, or just see what it did. Here you oh, go. It yeah. Sort of calmed it down a little bit. And um, so, yeah. So, I mean, I, I could, at some point when I get to know this better, I'll maybe I'll put some slides together on just the basic image processing. The interesting thing is if you go on YouTube, there are guys that have whole tutorials on this and they go, oh, here's how you process an image. And every guy is doing it a little bit differently. They can end up with some really nice mm -hmm. images. 
So, I mean, there are a bunch of ways to, to skin a cat, you know, with this thing. And then there are these scripts too that um, you can download where you, you can do batch processing on images and, and all sorts of other things. Like some of these, some of these have been, um, they're just, you know, shared by the, the public. And I, I don't know much about these. I haven't used them, but this thing, this thing just has so many functions. It's, it's kind of- what, what, what does batch processing mean? The bat- uh, in other words, you can, you, can, you can say, hey, I, this worked really well with this image. I've got 150 of these images. Do what I just did to that first one to all of them. And oh. pull, pull a batch in. You don't have to sit there and do it 150 times over and over again. Can, and you want can to do I exactly ask you guys this? Thing. Can Mark. I ask you guys this? You can obviously you can see the trapezium in this, and it, and in some of the other uh, images, they, it was blown out. But how do you, how would you go about getting it sharp enough in an image so you can actually see the E and F stars in there? Is it is there a way to sharpen that, or is that just well, part of it? What some guys do, you guys, some of you guys know a lot more about this, but they will take multiple shots and they'll take a, a much, you know, shorter exposure or lower gain or lower ISO. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Later, and then and then blend that with the outside so you can get a balanced image. Oh. What okay. you can do with what you can do with PixInsight is you can just um, process that out, which is sort of cheating, but you know, you can well you can do it, but so. There's also a technique called deconvolution that allows you to uh, iterate the stars in a single image, for example, and it will sharpen up the star. Yeah. It, it's, based on, it's based on the idea that you know what the point spread function is for your telescope <laughs> that tries to uh, get there. Okay. Yeah, so, so here we go. Here's the deconvolution function here. Yeah. I play with it a little bit. I haven't had too much luck, but you know, let's just apply one here and see what it does. You have a number of iterations that it lets you set. Um, yeah, here's ten. Okay, you're going to need about fifty. Okay, let's give it fifty. <laughs> Actually, before Boy, I, that's before I do good. that, let's go back. So, okay, we can see what it did. There's, there's what it did. Here's the previous. So that did sharpen it a bit. Yeah, but it also produced little halos, little dark halos around the star. It sometimes does that. Yeah. So there's a, there, you have to, there's other techniques to get rid of that halo. Yeah, that's this whole thing is tricky. So let's apply 50 here, see what it does to this. And, you know, I didn't play around with the standard deviation yeah. or tape or any right. of these things, but, but uh, I love this thing because it's like somebody put a lot of effort into coding each of these processes. And, and, you know, if you know how to use them properly, uh -huh. It's uh, it, it's pretty powerful. Right now, I'm in the trial period for this thing, and I've got till I've got another ten days. But I think I'm going to buy it. This one is about. If that's want, the result of fifty deconvolutions, then um, yeah. your point spread function is out of control in your telescope because you've sort of you brought out the coma. Yeah. Oh yeah, over here. Yeah. yeah. You sort yeah. you sharpen things a little, but it added a few artifacts that you don't need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's like getting smart on using mm -hmm. these and, and knowing what to do. Yeah. Um, let me let me try. So, so what does something like that run? Uh, this is like two hundred and something. Um, I forget the amount. Uh, I I'm if you I'll, I'll I'll Tim I'll send you the um, the link where you can download this thing and then you just say hey I want to try this out for a while and uh, they'll give you a forty five day free trial. But you know, get get like uh, get ready to use it first. I would say, and then yeah, let's see here. It's it's been called the uh, Photoshop for astrophotographers. Yeah, yeah. It, it is at that level. If any of you have the full Photoshop um, suite, yeah. So back to Sharp Cap. Here's the the polar align function. Which I bought this, you know, mainly so I could use this, and I'm I'm using everything else. But so it it you do you know you line up the the index marks on your on your telescope and and you get Polaris in there, and then it, when you it tells you to you click on a next button and it and then at 90 degrees in, in right ascension, and then it does another plate solve down here, and once it's solved it it gives you the 
polar line error here. So it's got like 12 minutes, 31 uh, seconds. And then it's saying move, move your polar axis right and up. So I do that. Let's see here. I got to go to desktop. I don't know, that's the same one, sorry. So uh, when you do your plate solves here, is that all done in the computer or do you have to be in contact with a internet-based database? No, it's all done on the computer. I got, that's, yeah, that's just doing it, doing it directly. So here I got it a little bit better and it's telling you, no, this is still poor. And what it's doing is it's, it's giving this a vector to say you're, you're trying to move the right ascension declination. And so right ascension will move it, you know, one way or another. Yeah, and this is great. actually, this is using the ZW120MM for the, on the guide scope. So, you know, you see some stars in here. And then, uh, so last night I was then able to get, let's see if this is it. Yeah, I finally got, here we go, three seconds <laughs> of, of uh, polar accuracy. So, Whoa. yeah. And yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. I, so let me ask you about this software. When you buy it, do you buy a subscription or do you get the software? The way it works is you download it and then um, you get the shark cap, the basic version for free. It just, what it has is the, those functions like uh, the tools like polar line, some of the ones that are really useful, you don't, they aren't not activated. Um, and so you, you want to buy it, they send you a license but they do it differently. Instead of 200 or 300, they charge you uh, $15 a year. So you, you buy the license, it's good for one year. And then I guess, you know, if, if you kept setting your uh, computer clock backwards, you know, date backwards, <laughs> you could probably keep using it. But I did no, that. I tried once. that with one piece of software and it caught me at it. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I did it on one <laughs> month, months, you know, and it worked. But once it went past, it, it set something on my computer. I couldn't use the software anymore. Yeah. So, but, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's what I got. All right. Very nice. Thanks. And Hank, I think Hank. Well, we're doing in this, in this workshop, I'm finding out a ton more about astrophotography rather than the, you know, from the, over at Broder. This, 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 uh, you could be bringing guys in from all over the place with uh, astrophotography. It's, it's neat, neat stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm spending, um, when I have the energy, I'm spending sometimes eight hours a day learning this stuff, you know, a few hours, everything. I went golfing today. I, I went out and met my friends out in Oxnard and golfed and I was just tired because I kept getting up and going back to sleep last night doing, doing all this stuff. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to do both, you know? But, yeah. Yeah, that makes it tough. Yeah. What kind of computer do you use? Yeah, I'm looking into, um, I, you know, it's funny because I, when I was doing some stuff in the backyard uh, for taking some flats during the day, I was listening to one of our previous uh, show shows on this, you know, videos. And uh, Hank, you were you were talking about. I didn't see you had the uh, Ellen the Opt Ellen Hans uh, filter, and that's one of the ones that's come up under the research. You know, of uh, there's the Ellen Hans, then the L Extreme, and then there's the uh, Radian Triad uh, filter. I'm I'm looking for a good quad filter for just filtering a lot of uh, unwanted light. So. Yeah, you, it's you know, it's, I'm not sure if I would recommend. I have the Ellen Hans. I haven't used it yet, but I have seen a lot of other images, and they all have this blue and red. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, you really, were you were saying that. Were, yeah, yeah. The, the stars are pink or blue, or so. It's it's not really that pretty. It will get you uh, much better images if the moon is out, but still, you know, if you have a choice, it's probably better to go. I don't know. Uh, well, narrow band if you like that kind of stuff. Um, or, or just to wait until it's dark and uh, just uh, not need it, a filter. Uh, if it's possible, you should probably avoid to using filters because it, it will show. Tony Hallis told me that what I should do in my case, because I talked to him, to get narrow band RGB filters to cut through the light pollution. He said I'd be have much better luck, but you know that involves getting a monochrome camera and then paying the money for the for the filters and then 
you know, triple the exposure, you know. Well, you know, and you can do that with mono cameras. And I, I think I might do that eventually. One of, one of the ZWO cameras is a 1600 mm that's mono. So then, you know, you have the filter wheel and people are doing that. They're actually coming out with one um, that I would think is better than that because it's uh, the list price is something like $2,400. It's coming out in a couple of months. Another one of the ZWO um, mono cameras like that. I what, I what I was interested in doing with the quad filters, I think you can get... Uh, the thing, I, I guess they're kind of referred to the Hubble palette or the Hubble stack. So you get, you know, the, the ones that they, they're using in the Hubble to process the images. They don't so, use uh, RGB in the Hubble. The what? They don't use RGB in the Hubble telescope. No, they're, but what I'm, what I'm saying is the wavelengths of light that they're yeah. processing the images in are, are very specific. And that's what this, there's one filter. That's what the quad band thing is trying to duplicate. Okay. The, the, the Hubble palette. So, um, but yeah, you know, so. Um, well, the quad, the quad filter doesn't do the Hubble palette. I mean, the quad filter just filters out specific bandwidths, right? And or the palette is something that you, that you can apply after the fact, after you, you know, that's, that's usually when you do uh, one filter yeah, at a time. Uh, LEDs tend to the the narrow band, band, band. they're hard to eliminate. Yeah. Well, I, I, I could, I don't know, I've just watched a lot of videos of these guys using these filters and uh, you just get some amazing results from yeah. bad, bad light areas, you know, uh, like a, like a Bortle eight or something like that. And they come up with unbelievable images. So I don't know. Yeah, that, yes, that's true. I mean, that's where I, I'm in a Bortle eight area yeah. and I use filters. I experiment with filters a lot because, and it's amazing. They are, they are very helpful. And so, some of my deep sky stuff I've got has come out pretty well, considering that it's Portal 8. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of light pollution from Phoenix and then uh, from Scottsdale, so. Yeah. I think I've had to figure I out think, how to overcome this. <laughs> by the way, there's, a, there's an app that um, I loaded on my, my uh, <clears throat> phone for the GPS thing where you say current spot. It only works if you're outdoors, I found, but it's called Clear Outside. And that, that is a really mm -hmm. nice thing. It gives you your Bortle index and it just gives you more than the- um, Yeah, yeah, I know I'm familiar you know, with you it. Have you seen that one? It gives you a lot more info yeah. than the standard thing I'm yeah. seeing, you know, so. I'm using it too. I'm yeah, using... you know, that's a good one, huh? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Uh, I uh, to go to the, to the link atmospheric because um, that's a very interesting one I've been using because it, it goes not only for light pollution, it goes for C and for cloud cover and transparency. And I think there's one other thing that it talks about the jet stream. So from this one site, uh, you just say, go to my location and then it, it brings up all these different layers. Yeah, layers. That Clear Outside app has about maybe 30 things it looks at. It's just more than you wanna know, you know, about your area, but uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So anyway, that's all I got. Very interesting, Bob. Yeah, good work. So uh, we got about 15 minutes left. To... Jerry, uh, you had a little thing. I, I think you had something about the barn door. Is 15 minutes a good enough for anything? Actually, I'm, I'm kind of suffering here from some arthritis in my joint. And so I think I'm going to get out of here so I can go lay down. So I'll see you guys all next week. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Good note, Jerry. So, Hank, did, did you want to talk about your barn door setup at all at this point? Do you want to try it again next time? Or? Uh, yeah, I can, I guess. I mean, it's, um, uh, let me share that here. So, uh, okay. So this is an old project, by the way. So this is from 2013. This is when I just got into uh, astrophotography. Let me first... Uh, Start at the beginning. This is a, a document that I wrote about it. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to, I can't apply this guy uh, so I can see. Okay, all right. So this is, um, you know, the standard equatorial platforms that they sell. This is the one from Tom Osipovsky. They cost like uh, $2,000 or $3,000 a piece, but they're very nice. Uh, but they're expensive. And um, well, um, I decided to try something else. I had a, you know, um, 
built a little barn door for, for my camera here. This is uh, just about as simple as it gets. Uh, it's just two, two boards with a hinge, an Arduino and a, um, a stepper motor for, you know, these stepper motors are like a dollar nowadays, I believe, so it's really cheap with controller, um, depending well, on where, where you buy. And <clears throat> this thing uh, sticks straight into a blob of epoxy that drives the motor on the other side. I don't know if I have a picture of that, probably not, but, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I actually do. So there's like a, a hex nut, is it, what do you call that, a, a T-nut, a T-nut that's at the bottom and it's a straight screw and normally you would get a deviation if you don't do it right, but since it is an Arduino, you can compensate for the angle of the uh, straight screw. And it, this one tracks actually uh, pretty accu accurately. So I got some nice uh, images from that. Actually, you know, if you're interested, let me just show you this. That was also done with that same Barden door. Um, let me see if I can share this. Uh, hold on. Um, uh, here, okay. To get they rid use, of the deviation, do they curve the screw? Is that what they do? Yeah, yeah, they, they curve it. Okay, so here. But okay. he compensates for it mathematically, so. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I can't get my, oh, here it is. Is this, is, oh, I'm, I'm screen share, okay. So this is also done with that same barn door tracker that uh, with the camera. You see, no, you, it's not shared, right? You yes. have to unshare and then share uh, where you're looking at your photos. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I'm, I was sharing something else that was done with this Barden door. Um, let's see here. Share screen. Ah, oh, yeah. So now this one's shared. Okay. All right. This is um, a time lapse. There's something totally differently. Um, but that's also pretty cool. So this is, uh, I believe it's two and a half hours. And I shot like one image every... 20 seconds? No, it's a 20 second image and once a minute or something like that. This was done at, um, we call it the medicine circle. It's uh, up by uh, uh, on Gibraltar Road. Um, if you know Gibraltar Rock, there's a trail on the other side. If you follow that, it goes to uh, uh, what we call them on Wednesday nights, <laughs> the medicine circle and I spent the night there with a friend. It was kind of cool. Uh, I have another second one, but it's kind of this is was done with the Fuji XA1 as well. It's kind of cool. These uh, time lapses. Is that it, is medicine? Uh, is that at the the very top, or is it cap? You know, is it as far as uh, floors flats or? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's it. It's not not quite a floors flats. It's before that. Okay. Um, I think it's also called Flores Peak, actually, if I'm not mistaken. That's a different word for, for it. We have a group uh, of the Sierra Club, and we uh, uh, go hiking every Wednesday night in the dark. And uh, so we get to see these places when the stars are out, which is kind of cool, actually. And especially, yeah. you know, if you're out there hiking late at night, you're above mm -hmm. the clouds and above the fog. The, the views are just magnificent, actually. So anyway. Back to the uh, to the other one. Uh, let me see. Here. Okay, so uh, share. All right. So this is my little barn door, and then I decided. Well, okay, I've got this Dobsonian, <coughs> this uh, ten-inch Dobsonian from the um, the SBAU that I got for like 110 bucks with some other stuff. <laughs> That I never used, and I thought hey, I'm gonna build something that I can put put the Dubsonian on top of. So I built this box here uh, with a it's a, like a wedge kind of. The, the hinges are on the other side uh, at 34 and a half degrees, and uh, there's there's a little uh, a dial here. You, you, uh, um, you call that uh, handle that like, that you can turn it with, and all you have to do is turn it to at the right frequency, and you should be able to track the stars. So that was the first incarnation. Here are the the hinges, it's pretty sturdy altogether, you know. Um, so um, then I, did, I realized that I had to provide some counterweight because um, uh, you can you could turn it manually, but if you want to use it with a stepper motor, it's uh, it, depending on what, what kind of stepper motor you use. Okay, I use this very small stepper motor that's like half a watt or was 50 milliwatt or something very just the same one that I used for that little uh, camera barn door tracker. It runs for, you know, 12 or 24 hours on, on six double A's. 
which is kind of nice. So the plan was here to just, uh, you see that uh, screw here sticking up with a mm -hmm. blob of epoxy on it and the, the um, other end of the stepper motor fits right in there. You just, you just press it in there because it's, uh, it's not a round, but it's, it's like half, half flat. And, and so <clears throat> you can stick it in there and it, uh, it grabs it. And so this screw, that, that, uh, there's a hex, uh, hex nut on the other side of it. Uh, if you turn that screw, then, then the barn door will go down. So these, these two two by four stick all the way to the other side and that there are hinges there, it's connected. You're getting bind a little bit. You're running a pretty small motor. Is it, yeah, it's a pretty small motor. And that's why I added this super bungee. So it, it, it's <laughs> I've got some pulleys and so on. And that way I was able to balance it at the right point because this is a, basically an unstable system, right? You put a big dob on top of 65 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you've got a, a heck of a lot of weight. So you have to do something to compensate for it. And I figured I was able to figure out. You see, I've got a bunch of screws uh, sitting down here. If you see that one, two, three, four screws. So if you take this end of the bungee and pull it down and put it on screw, that screw or that screw or that screw, then you've got a varying uh, with uh, varying uh, strength mm -hmm. bungee. Anyway, <laughs> that's it, clever. It was, it's I just like a, crazy, it's a crazy project, but it was it was so much fun to do. So this is the inside of the box, by the way. So there's a little uh, comp. Uh, uh, Level over there, bubble. It's a, you know, it's not a bubble level, but it's two linear levels. And so this is how it works. Uh, I've got. Um, you can level the platform here with these uh, four screws. They are also hex nuts. I love hex nuts and <laughs> all this stuff. Little bubble level. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this this plank here. I use that for polar alignment. So I I, I lined it up with the uh, with the right side of the box and then. Uh, just eyeballing it, pointing at Polaris, and uh, that's usually <laughs> not quite accurate. <laughs> you have Looks to like you had a lot of uh, uh, flooring left after your uh, re, uh, you know, I, I, I noticed I use a lot of that uh, flooring, you know, wood flooring. Wood, wood flooring? Oh, flooring, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's right. I, I had, this is from uh, a wood floor that they put in this house in 2008. I, I saved all these things, and they're actually very uh, you know, solid, oh, yeah. beauty uh, pieces of wood, so engineered wood, and it's beautiful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, you, you have to sort of know where Polaris is relative to the NCP, and then you can aim it fairly well, actually, accurate enough to to take short short you know exposures. And this is the screw that comes out, you know. Um, you Acorn. Know, it, it's the, on there. <coughs> So what is this here? Yeah, I also had to add some plastic just to mm -hmm. stiction. If you just use the wood on wood, you get stiction. And I had some some plastic from a binder that I put on there that helps a bit. So <laughs> you're a man after my own heart, you know. <laughs> All this yeah, stuff. it's still clever. <laughs> this is clever, Hank. <laughs> yeah, and so so that was just the RA axis, right? Now, of course, I wanted to have a dual guided uh, barn door, so I had to come up with a de declination axis. So here's the declination axis. It's a piece of board on top of it, and you see this piece of iron there. It's yeah, it's, it's, le it's sitting on a little, little notch in there, and so it's pretty solid. But that that's a tip in the other direction. It's a so, pivot. Yeah. yeah, and so what you see here that that little plank that is also meant for to put another motor in. So there's there's another piece of a blob of epoxy and a screw and so on. I'll show that later. And so then you have two motors that you can use, and you can use it with an auto guider. So this is the system. Here's the blob of epoxy. There's the screw uh, that that pushes the thing up and down. And you can at the bottom here you can stick in the motor with an Arduino and everything and and control it. So. Uh, what is this here? This is, oh, yeah. Uh, this is something that I need to set up. Um, it's on, oh, and there's the dub, and there's the whole thing. So, yeah. Well, we do. Um, yeah, and you have to balance it carefully. Is that a 13 inch Sorry? scope? What, what size? It's a, no, it's a 10.1 10 inch uh, Calder Odyssey. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a really old one. It's this this scope is probably like thirty years old. I just gave it away to Bob's brother, right? I don't. Oh yeah, that's the one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got uh, oh, there's the camera by the way. It's sitting on the top. See that there's a that's my Canon D three fifty, which is a lousy camera, but 
Yeah, for for that, I had to take the focuser out because I, you know these nudes don't don't have enough back focus, so I had to take that thing out and replace it. I, I just used the hole and some distancing stuff and got it working. So <laughs> it's another all these little details. Oh, there you go. There's the I love rubber rubber bands. I use rubber bands for everything. <laughs> Tell that, you know. <laughs> all right. I uh, can. That's the auto guidoscope on it. Okay, on the straight on the dob. All right, there we go. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. the software components. Okay, so these are mm -hmm. my motors. So one is for uh, RA and the other one is for declination. The one to the left here on the top is for RA. That's the one that falls on top of the blob that was sticking out to the top. So by its own gravity, the uh, motor pulls itself into the blob of epoxy and starts turning it. And um, this one has the motor on the bottom side and pushes up into that other blob of epoxy was that, that we're pushing down from the screw, if you, if you recall that. So anyway, these are the Arduinos. I had to solder some resistors because if you hook up the auto guider, that's, um, it has an optocoupler and it's basically um, an on-off signal, but what you, what you get from the it, it, you can you can just use it as an analog signal in in the uh, Arduino. Use an A to D converter, and you can measure the voltage drop. And to get the voltage drop right, you just solder a resistor on it, and and if you have the right value, you get a significant drop that you can measure. And so then you don't know when the auto guider says, okay, you have to uh, accelerate or you have to decelerate, or or uh, for the deck it would be up and down and so on, all that stuff. And I had some cables that I hooked up to, uh, I don't know if I have a picture of the auto guider. No, I don't. Well, <clears throat> oh, there you see the resistors actually. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, Hank, what, what was the point of the resistors? Um, you get a voltage uh, from the, from the uh, auto guider, from the QHY5. Uh, and- um, Just want to limit the vo voltage? Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to remember exactly how it worked. Um, one, I think the negative negative was the ground, and the positive is uh, yeah. Anyway, you, you just get a voltage that's it's it's like an on off signal from the uh, um, oh, guide. Okay, but you have to measure it. So um, yeah, good question. Why don't I measure it directly? I can't recall. Uh, I'll see if I can recall it and, and explain okay. it next time. But okay. I have to no use problem. those resistors and everything works. So no problem. But here you see the two motors sitting on there. So the one here to the right, that's the one that's uh, sticking up. And that one is <laughs> pointing down. Anyway, so yeah. So this one is, is just using its own gravity. It pushes into that blob of epoxy there. and <laughs> Crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. How much is how very much is clever? Done? Very clever. And this this is the <clears throat> auto guider. So here, um, I'm I don't believe that this is a very good uh, error pattern, but the auto guider definitely worked. And this this is a 10, 10 minute image of the um, M one hundred one that you see up there in the upper right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I have. Oh, this is yeah the Orion Nebula. I took that one with it. That's pretty. These cute. single single images. Um, what, no, no, uh, no, these are the stacked images. Um, I don't know exactly what the, uh, let's see here. Okay, this is a 30 second exposure at 400 ISO. Hmm. So the, the tracking definitely works because if you take a 30 second picture without tracking, you'll see stripes all over the place. So this thing is actually working. <clears throat> this is <laughs> <actually good. laughs> That's great. This is uh, with a, a supermarket telescope that I got at Super 5. This is a six inch uh, Newtonian. And I thought, oh, let me try that. I just, I just put it on top of the barn door dr drive, not the dog, and, uh, just with its tripod, just on the shortest uh, legs. And uh, I took this one. Mm. So with very cheap supermarket telescopes, you can still get some nice images. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, this is, uh, oh, this is uh, the, the camera barn door somewhere on Camino Cielo. Um, West Camino Cielo, I believe. Uh, this is the code for the tracker. I think I have a better version now, but whatever. Anyway, I, I also have a, I, I think I have some other. 
Okay, I have an image of the horse head and I don't have it in this uh, thing, but oh well. No, some other time, maybe. You anyway, know which Arduino was it the Uno or the Mega, or do you know which Arduino that was? Uh, this is the plain Uno, uh, Uno. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have much more powerful ones now. So the, the uh, WeMOS that I use, that, that one has like uh, uh, four megabytes or was it gigabytes? Uh, four gig of memory, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. No, four, no four, meg, four megabytes of memory. Um, and that is an Arduino. It also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but it has the complete Arduino layout and they cost like 99 cents. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. Jeez. Well, the shipping is $3 something. So they make the money off the shipping instead of... <laughs> but yeah, that's that's if you go to Alibaba, Tim, that, that site that you mentioned, Alibaba is very big actually. So that's, uh, that's where you get all the cheap electronics. Yeah, I bought a pack of the uh, uh, Arduino Nanos, those real tiny ones. Yeah. Anyway, so this uh, <clears throat> barn door thing is now rotting away uh, by the side of the house. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, so. clever, very clever. I, I did yeah. get a prize. I did win a prize with it uh, for, uh, on the RTMC, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Tim, I saw, I saw you walking around with an RTMC T-shirt one time. Uh, do you go to the RTMC too? Or? No, I went to one. I went to one oh, okay. way back when, and then Chuck kept. Chuck goes to one every year, and he would bring me a T-shirt. I love the T-shirts. Yeah. I would. Uh, I think I, my wife and I were going to go to another one, and and uh, it was the one year that they had the weather that was just terrible. <laughs> it was. It, they had winds that were like 60, 65 knot winds, and then they had. Uh, yeah. when it was almost snowing at night, and all the vendors had stuff blown all over the ground. Oh yeah. I was that there. was a real that was a bad year, and <laughs> I, I almost went to that one. I was really glad. I, I, I you know, I'm not I'm not a big camper. Hank, I, my dad used to say that camping is a black and white TV and and room service is late. <laughs> yeah. I, I used I to go continuously to RTMC from 1989 all the way up to 2004. Wow. Uh, I, I went from uh, from 2013 to when they stopped, which is 2019. And on one of these trips, I actually won a $2,500 APO, the 127 uh, millimeter APO carbon fiber, which wow. is very nice from Explore Scientific. So <laughs> it paid That's off. A nice, they had nice tubes. They had nice, they had nice scopes. It's a nice scope, yeah. yeah. Although it's not my favorite. My my favorite is the Macnute. Actually, it's much more practical. It's uh, you know, an Apo. I had an AVX mount, and the 127 CF is just a little bit too heavy. Plus, it is kind of a slow sh scope, and I really don't want to spend a lot of time outside. So, I yeah, yeah, want an F F4 scope, and I'm still waiting for my new. To, it's um, <laughs> the one year, the one, the one year I went three and, and, half, and, three and a half months I, now, and uh, I love so. I love going around and looking at all the guys that were building stuff. I, the, the, the one year I went, this guy had a, a Newtonian that he he made the tube out of wood, and mm -hmm. I mean it was he literally took veneer and rolled it, rolled the tube on it. I guess he started with a Sona tube and then just literally mm -hmm. rolled the, the the veneer, the the wood veneer uh, around the tube. It, it was fabulous, and it yeah. just happened to be the year they had the yard up there, that big daub that was the, the yard. The yard scope. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed watching all those guys. It's clever, clever stuff. <laughs> I like your little, I like your tracker though. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a hoot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, I'm gonna stop. It, 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 I'm sorry, we, we've reached yeah. the nine o'clock time time area. So I think for anything else, we can save it for next week and uh, think of stuff you want to present. And uh, we'll close it off for now. But boy, it's great stuff I'm, I'm looking at. So very entertaining yeah. for me. It was fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Thank you, guys. OK, great. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff, Tom. I got some stuff I'll share with you. OK, I hope you get a better connection, too. And Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll work on it. Feed those mice. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.